Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello and welcome to Rogue Trader. And today I'm going to take a look at British American Tobacco. British American Tobacco are the world's largest tobacco company. I was surprised to learn that 19% of the world population still smokes. And this company has a fairly loyal customer base and steady incomes producing a 6.8% dividend yield. It seems at first glance to be a very nice defensive stock where you can get good dividend yields and rely on their revenue. A time when the revenue of most other companies looks so uncertain. Currently 88% of their revenues comes from selling cigarettes and a big part of their strategy is moving people over into smoking vaping products and thermal heat products and they're targeting 5 billion of new category revenue by 2025 and they want to achieve that by gaining 50 million next generation product customers by 2030. This is also a company that should get a boost post COVID because as the world frees up people will be out in the pubs more drinking and smoking and then um, you know you know how nice it is to have that cigarette whilst you drink your pint. So Combustibles is their cigarettes they sell which are these well-known brands you see here and then they actually do sell snuff which surprisingly brings in five percent of their revenues and then they have what they call their new categories and so these are the products they want to use to replace the income from smoking as people stop smoking and this is their modern oral products which is basically chewing tobacco then thermal heat products and vaping which is the views brand as you can see these currently only make up about five percent of their revenue they have four regional segments which are the usa which accounts for 45 percent of their revenue Europe and North Africa, which is 23%, Asia Pacific and the Middle East, which accounts for 17% of their revenue, and Americas and Sub-Saharan Africa, which accounts for 15% of their revenue. So obviously the US is the most important segment of their revenue, but there's a reasonable, a reasonable share of the other regions as well. So that, which gives them a nice distribution of sales over the world. So here I put together their half one data for 2021. And it's interesting that they actually, the sales of cigarettes actually went up in the first half of last year by 1.5%. The sales of cigarettes dropped 4% in the US and 3% in the Europe. And they say that generally the sales of cigarettes in the West are dropping by 5% every year. But they're made up for that by increased sales in Sub-Saharan Africa going up 3% and in Asia and Middle East going up by 8%. What might be happening in Africa, the Middle East and Asia as more and more people become middle class they move from the, the cheap Chinese brands or whatever they're smoking into these luxury brands which, uh, which the big tobacco companies own. And so that could explain why there's an increase in people smoking cigarettes in Asia, the Middle East and Africa. It's kind of reassuring as a prospective shareholder because it's good to know that although there is this 5% decline in people smoking, uh, that is made up for more people smoking luxury brands elsewhere in the world. Looking at the new categories, there is impressive growth. In the US, vaping was up 98%. In Europe, vaping was up 70% and thermal heat products up 99%. And in Asia, vaping was up 126%. So they are achieving strong growth in the new category products. It's interesting of how many people use snuff in the USA. And it's interesting that in the different areas, different new products are 
different products are attractive. So in the US, it's all vaping in the new categories. Whereas in Asia and the Middle East, it's only the thermal heat products. No one is vaping there. Whilst in Europe and North Africa, there's a mixture of the thermal heat products and vaping. So looking at their share price and since the Reynolds takeover, it dropped steadily and then has been steadily flat and hated over the last three years. In 2017, there was a massive event where British American Tobacco took over Reynolds. I believe Reynolds were actually the second largest tobacco company in the world, with BATS being the biggest. And and that so this was obviously a huge takeover. They already owned much of the company, and so they they basically bought up the remaining 38% of shares to create this huge combined company. Now that gave them these brands, Camel, Pall Mall, and uh, to add to their other portfolio of premium brands. But it also allowed them to acquire the Views vaping product and so this was obviously key to their strategy in to enable them to move into vaping as a exit away from the as a long term exit away from people smoking so that's that's a very important takeover they got a new ceo the cfo retired but he was age 60 but otherwise general generally boring in terms of news flow which which is actually what i like um, and then in 2020, they took over the company Drift. Now, Drift produced these Velo nicotine pouches. Then in 2021, they some really interesting news. They actually you they actually made a a Views CBD oil product that was trialled in Manchester. So this is uh, BAT launching their first CBD vaping product. And, you know, this is kind of a bold move. CBD oil is when you get cannabis plants and take away the THC, which causes the psychotic effects, you're left with CBD. And smoking CBD is kind of seen as trendy in corn. There's a big boom of people uh, smoking CBD oil. So although, you know, so that's very interesting that they're doing that. Then they opened up a 20% stake in the company Organigram for 0.1 billion. Now, Organigram are a Canadian company which produce cannabis and BAT are setting up a R&D excellence center with them to develop new products, which are initially going to be CBD based. But that's incredible that they are, um, they now own 20% of a company which is producing cannabis. So they obviously get some uh, profit from there, I'm guessing. Um, but more interestingly, how they're developing a, a CBD excellence center. So this plays into their, their view CBD product trial. And it really is very interesting that they're um, moving to the CBD space. Then in mid-July, it was announced that Views is now the number one vaping brand. Now, I've got this data from Statista. And you can see that in 2020, Joule were the uh, number one vaping brand. So Views has now took over from them. And that is very impressive because... Remember that in 2017, they didn't have any vaping brand of any significance and they acquired views when they took over Reynolds. So it's very impressive that in only four years time, they are now the leading uh, vaping brand. And only in recent weeks, they've announced the creation of a biotech company called K-Bio. Now I found this on YouTube and K-Bio, they were basically Kentucky Biotechnologies, who BAT have took over and now created this new company, K-Bio. And what they do is they actually grow tobacco plants, which are genetically engineered, 
to then have vaccines and biotechnology products in them. So you can see them there processing the tobacco plants. And then they get they go into these big bioreactors where they then um, extract the proteins or the antibodies they want to use. And looking on their website, uh, they have actually produced some products, including a uh, and monoclonal antibody cocktail used to treat Ebola virus. And they have some flu vaccine candidates, a genital herpes product, and, a co and even a COVID vaccine candidate. It looks like these are all phase one or, you know, not clearly success, you know, er, all kind of early development still. But that is really impressive that they are moving into biotechnology because it obviously makes a good sense for them. It's a good fit for them because in the future, when they move away from people growing tobacco for smoking, they could use, they could still use their, own, their, their existing supply chain to have people growing tobacco plants to create new drugs, you know, to create an additional revenue stream to help replace the combustibles revenue stream. So the CBD vaping stuff and the biotechnology move and the move into biotechnology, it's all still chump change at the moment, but it adds a bit of spice in terms of uh, owning this company, which is welcome. So you can see, very high income of 27 billion a year and it's a steady income uh, when they took over Reynolds that created a 23 billion gain on disposal 58 percent of the shares that they owned in Reynolds um, and then after that spike it's steady revenues as you can see here there's the the pump up and you can see that the you know their net income and their revenues are a step above before the takeover. So they're, you know, it's a step change of increasing of from 17 billion up to over 25 billion. And the net income, it's a step increase from about 5 billion to more like 6 billion. So it looks really good. The, these numbers look really nice. And, you know, it makes you wonder why the share price has been so low for so long. Um, but obviously it's a, a hated sector, but which actually in terms of the numbers is performing very well. I looked at their half one results and they were broadly flat actually. Um, there was actually a 0.4 billion legal payoff, but when you account for that, they are, you know, they've, they've performed fairly well. Uh, so it's a really a steady progression of these stable revenues you can see that after the reynolds takeover that increased their us sales um, and you can see here in revenue by product class that unfortunately still all these new new categories are still only a very small bit of the pie it's all still smoking and in profit by geography um, everything is generally increasing apart from the Americas and Sub-Saharan Africa, which seems to be declining. Looking at the assets, and really, it's generally steady. The only thing that stands out, of course, is the after the Reynolds takeover, there was a huge increase in their intangible assets. Um, and when I look at the profile of their assets, you see that intangibles dominate and in particularly, the branding is about 54% of their intangibles. So here's their annual report. And you can see here how when you look at their in, look into their intangible assets, most of that is handed down to trademarks and similar intangibles. It is really the brands um, which seem to be given so much of their asset value. You know, of course, we know how important branding is in with tobacco companies. They're famous for it. But that to me, you know, is that to me is kind of a risk because if people move away from smoking and into vaping and stuff, 
perhaps you could then see serious impairment for those for the loss of the value of those brands so i didn't like that but then in terms of raw numbers though it is a nice asset profile i mean their their market cap there is barely the same as their net income as their net assets when you take away their liabilities so they have a price to book of 1.1 so yeah so it's a good asset profile compared with other sectors but i don't i but i still don't like how 54 percent of it is their cigarette brands and looking at the equity and valuation profile you can see how the market cap is hugging the net assets which to me is a sign of a of a reasonably valued company I don't like the debt though at 36 billion, but still it's generally, you'd say overall, you know, a reasonable profile, you know, particularly when I compare it to uh, some of these other sectors where the market cap has just looked ridiculous in recent years. So following on from that theme, we see how British American tobacco and Imperial tobacco, their share price, is a very low price to earnings ratio and, and price to book value compared with every other sector so look at his it stocks which are you know which have a, a high high price to book ratio and relatively high price to earnings his pharma stocks with very high price to earnings values and commodities even you know even commodities look expensive when you compare them against tobacco stocks. So the tobacco sector really does look like it's been hammered for a long time and actually could represent good value. And we see only December was there all of a sudden, this sudden change where they seem to be, there just seem to be money pouring into this sector. And that does kind of agree with the recent trend of people fleeing growth stocks and then perhaps they're moving into this corner of the room of course i should point out that looking at long-term trend we've still not broken that long-term trend this could be a sucker rally and we'd still be in trend but but when you think of what's going on with interest rates and stuff perhaps you put these down as asymmetrical bet you know you could lose your bet but you're still at rock bottom but you know you could be seeing a reversal of this long-term trend and um, would make these very attractive to be in so the statement of cash flows and they raised 11.9 billion from normal activities in 2020 the vast majority of that is quality cash in the bank it's uh, money from selling cigarettes so that's very impressive they also raised 9.8 billion from long-term debt but they then paid off 10.6 billion of long-term debt bit of a debt merry-go-round going on there but still uh, when we look at their other costs so it was 0.5 billion in capex 0.6 billion miscellaneous 2 billion they paid in tax 1.6 billion they had to pay on interest on their debt and they made 0.3 billion on net investments when you take away the the 10 billion of debt in and 10 billion of debt paid off from that 11.9 billion of cash coming in from normal exact normal activities which is solid normal activities there isn't actually that much they have to pay out so it leaves them in this luxury luxurious position of being able to pay out 4.7 billion in dividends you know, allowing for an amazing 6.8% dividend yield, they can pay out that amazing dividend and still have 0.9 billion positive cash after that. It's a very healthy statement of cash flows with high quality revenues. So looking at their shareholders and only 1% is retail. And amongst their bigger shareholders, actually the capital group has been selling off in 2021. But to make up for that, there's some serious, um, some serious increases in shareholding by Spring Mountain Investments and Alan Gray. 
So overall, I'd call that like, I'd call that a neutral shareholder profile. So a time where people seem to be fleeing from growth stocks and a time when it's hard to find any sector that's not overbought. I do find British American Tobacco to be a very compelling buy because they're a defensive company for what's a very difficult year and they're paying a nice 6.8% dividend yield and they're in a sector that's been trashed for many years. So, you know, I looked at their, their revenues do look safe, at least for the short to medium term because of the increase of revenues elsewhere make up for the loss of revenues in the US and UK for cigarettes. Plus they've got lots of growth in their vaping and thermal heat products. And then there's a bit of spice added on with their CBD oil and their biotechnology stuff. So I've decided to buy some shares in British American Tobacco. It's a value stock with a promising performance in the medium term and high dividends. The apparent flight from growth stocks seem to make this defensive stock attractive. And this sector has been hated for so long, making perhaps for an asymmetrical bet. You know, this is this is such a long term trodden down trend that you can't see it going down much more if this is just uh, if this upswing is still part of the same trend. If you look at a one year scale, if this recent trend is people running away from the growth stocks and moving into tobacco stocks, which have a priced book of roughly one, then I do think they do offer a asymmetrical bet. When I was looking at the revenues, increased sales in Africa, Middle East and Asia, they make up for the 5% a year we're losing in people stopping smoking in the US and Europe. They're selling the number one vape brand in the US. And they have this CBD and biotech ventures providing a bit of spice as well for the long term. I think there's a risk that if there's data coming out in five to 10 years, that shows vaping to be really safe compared with smoking in the five to 10 year time span. So about five years from now, it'd be a real good time to consider selling them. Unless, of course, they've completely transformed their revenue profile and most of it is vaping anyway. And it's really important that they continue their growth in vaping and thermal heat products and that they achieve profitability of these new sectors. So this is a must that I need to keep an eye on in the next couple of years for me to hang on to them. But still, at a time when I found it very, very difficult to find a stock that didn't look overbought, I found some solace in the tobacco sector. And so for me, that makes British American Tobacco a buy. Please remember that I'm just an amateur investor vlogging my investment journey on the Internet. But uh, whatever you're doing, have fun. I hope you've enjoyed this exciting week we've had, uh, particularly any crypto investors there. But whatever you do, remember to have fun and good luck with your investing.